My name is Lola Kalman. I am studying art at Cooper Union in New York City. I'm currently spending a semester abroad in Jerusalem at Betzalel University. Uh, this is the house of Mazali Shayahu, my grandmother. This is my makeup. I often wear eyeshadow when I want to look extra nice. I think men find my eyes mysterious. However, I'm not your average conformist woman. This is a sweater I wear in public sometimes because I know other people find it ugly. I do this to demonstrate my sense of humor and to make a statement about my value as a human being and as an artist, rather than just as a woman. I admit, though, that I do harbor the kind of negative self-image that plagues a modern woman. To demonstrate, this is a part of my body that I'm most self-conscious about. My butt and thighs. It's the Yeshayahu Pulkis curse. I try to keep my butt tight so that fat won't accumulate too much as I age. On the other hand, I'm so passionate about severing my ties to my own vanity that I've stopped shaving my armpits. First of all, I was inspired by a yoga teacher I once had, who is beautiful both inside and out, despite her armpit hair. She gave me the courage I needed. But also, Shaving my armpits started feeling like this oppressive symbol of my own self-objectification as a woman. I felt that by not shaving my armpits I would be true to myself. Growing my armpit hair was a means of unshackling myself from this garden of earthly delights that is this female body, so that I could aspire to be like the greatest men of history. However, I'm still not completely comfortable wearing tank tops in public. And I still do this. And even this. It's to attract men's attention. Because if I can get their attention, then there's also a chance that they'll listen to me. I believe that some of my richest friendships with males started this way. However, the ultimate objective is not that men pay attention to my body, but to my mind. These are my films. They're my ticket out of being merely a woman. In my art, I have tried to make intelligent statements about a variety of broad issues. I felt that I could transcend the label of a female artist if I could just make something brilliant and true enough. I mostly talked about how truth or objectivity are impossible in film. I tried to make films that expose their own mechanics. Films that make people realize that film is a lie. Not, not with kippers. Kippers. You're thinking of capers. Are you talking about these little things? Like green? <laughs> yeah, that's no, I mean it's not in the line, but I'm trying to explain just, it. Just, more. just say, are you talking about the little kippers? The, the... Oh, okay. I objectified my family in the service of these statements. I felt I was giving my ideas more credibility by putting the reputation of my own kin at stake. I scorned the quote unquote feminine instinct to protect my flesh and blood so that men would take my art seriously. Studies is also confirm what every parent knows but what no other brother, no one brothers, Fathers. brothers to take um, consult, re, reconcile with theories of child development. The weather adolescents smoke, smoke.
Well, get into scrapes with the law or commit serious crimes depending far more on what their peers do than on what their parents do. This is the last work of that nature I completed before arriving here. It is a trailer for an imaginary documentary about a twisted but influential psychologist who preaches cruel Darwinist ideology to others and destroys his own family with the same venom. When we were living in nature, there were no lawyers. We handled our social problems all by ourselves. The word bully divides us. It makes us think that there really is us and them. There are people who are bullies and there are people who are not bullies. We're all bullies. In it, I manipulated home footage of my father to cast him in this awful role. I wanted to demonstrate the power of film to mislead. I mean, this is in civilization. In, in outer nature, the way to be the winner is to be the winner. And in, in nature and civilization, the way to be the winner is to be the loser. The losers have the most power. I screened it for my video class at Bitsalo. The professor's criticism was that it's still obvious through the film how much I love my dad. He called the film a birthday video for my father. So maybe I wasn't good at being a critic. I decided to turn inward for this next video. I revealed my deepest physical insecurities through an instructional yoga video that turns confrontational. I really gave of myself for this project, emotionally and physically. I rubbed onions in my eyes to force myself to cry. I stretched so hard I couldn't bend over for an entire week. I made myself vulnerable. I felt very good about that. It was cathartic for me. Feel that the heat washing over you is equal to the admiration that will be lavished on you as, through continued yogic practice, you return to what you once were when God blessed you with a body that shone in the sunrise of womanhood. A body that rewarded you with perfect curves for gorging yourself on french fries and ice cream cake. If the world wanted me to look inside, damn it I would. I made feminist art. But the professor said my movie still reads like a yoga video. That I didn't succeed ultimately in transcending the thing that I was criticizing. He said it's clear through the irony that I love yoga anyway. You may be saying to yourself, I know exactly what's your problem. You're speaking from the female experience. Are you really capable of making non-feminine art? I mean, you yourself admitted that you objectify yourself for the male gaze. You're therefore incapable of being objective. I agree with you. And I have a confession to make. My art itself is an attempt at getting attention. Don't you see? Making films is my mind's way of crying out for companionship. My art is a commercial for myself. Not just for my ideas, for myself. So the question is, do I use my body to attract attention to my mind? Or do I use my art to attract attention to myself?